can AI make a fairer future? If you think about this question, you may think, well, maybe not. Actually, to be fair, it's something which is very, very human for us. And so why machine should take and do something about us for us to be fair? At the same time, if you think about it, maybe machines are more neutral, right? So maybe it's great to have an AI which is going to help us to be, make the world much fairer. So let me revisit the question with an example and to deep dive a little bit more into, into the techniques. So first thing is, there is this project or software called Compass, which was deployed in the United States of America. And there, the idea was to kind of predict if a person will commit a crime or will escape and not present in front of the judge. So it's prediction of a risk of not coming. And, and therefore, you would go rather to prison or not. Turns out that some people claim this algorithm was biased because there were more black people being flagged as being risky. And you see here in the illustration, high risk for this gentleman, black skin, and you have a low risk for a white gentleman. You say, that's not fair. But if you think about it, if you really think about it, actually, you are also biased. Why would be this white gentleman less risky or more risky just because he has a bad look? This doesn't make sense. We have a bias towards his face, too. So I feel very scared when I see this white gentleman. And that's, I'm, I'm, I also have, as a human, some biases. So the question is not so easy, even though this algorithm is certainly was biased towards the black people. So let's go meet with, um, with machine learning and, well, with AI. What is wrong with machine learning and why this is so complicated? Um, the thing is, when we do machine learning, we usually uh, work with a data set, some historical data, some labels. So let's say we have uh, some, uh, we're trying to predict that we're going to hire software engineers. OK, and then we have labels. We pass some supervision with humans. And then the human said, yes, we hire these people or we don't. And then we try to train an algorithm, could be anything in your network, gradient boosting, whatever you like. And then there is this black model which learns and you know, complex model that predicts things based on the variables. OK, so you may say, OK, fair enough, no problem. Now, the thing is that most of the people, and I think I see, I see this is still true in the room, more, most engineers are male. So most of them have been hired as male. OK, so when the machine learning learns, it may use this variable as being discriminative because it's something which is very recurrent. So every time we have a CEO, every time we have a software engineer, we have male variable being used to predict that actually is a good candidate. And actually, we're not predicting this. We're predicting that this is the type of people we have been recruiting. So we're reproducing the bias. Now, you may say, OK, that's a problem. But what about if we just erase the whatever bad is, the sanity variable, the gender. OK, we just erase it, and then HR is happy. Everything is great. And then we try to predict. Now, the problem with this is that actually machine learning is able to reconstruct the variable. So if we keep on the selection um, example, the curriculum one, we will have, for example, things like hobbies. And HR will tell you, oh, yeah, hobby is very important. We need to have the hobbies actually in the data set because you know, it tells us if it's a you know, if the people are collaborative or not, competitive or not, and so on. But now, some hobbies have more correlations with gender. So soccer in Europe, more correlated to men. Soccer in the United States, correlated to women. Ballet, OK, I don't know how many of you guys play, uh, did ballet when you were young. But the point is, you will reconstruct it. And if you think about it, think a little bit about it, actually, you could even have a data set which the purpose of the machine learning is to predict the gender. And you will see it does work quite well. OK. So can we design a fair future? So some people argue that the solution for this is just we understand. So one of the things is like, oh, we understand what's happening. So we do a SHAP. So SHAP values, I don't know, for those who know. So we try to analyze the influence of variables in our training. Well, does it work? Because guess what? If you don't have that variable, Explicitly, you cannot see anything. So what we try to do is try to control the model without trying to understand it. So we keep it as a black box, and we try to do it. And the trick is quite simple, and it's the following. The idea will be, 
Oh, actually, they will be. <laughs> the idea is that we take our historical data set, but now we will have one function, which is, let's say, something we reward the model for doing the right prediction. So for example, OK, yes, you predicted the right person that we saw in the past. You predict the right risk. You predicted, I don't know, the person's going to churn. You predict whatever you're supposed to do. That's your task. But then, if by some chance I'm able to tell anything about this person on their gender, I will punish the algorithm. So I will say, no, that's not good. And so I will do something about it. OK, this is very high wavy. So let's open a little bit the hood. OK, this is, the, this is the engine. OK, so you see it's very, very simple. So don't get scared about numbers. Uh, it's very simple. So you have x. x is the description of my candidate. And forget about z, z for a moment. And then we have y hat. So y hat is what we're trying to predict. OK, so one thing I could do is I could have x. I predict y. So I predict if the person is going to become, uh, is going to be admitted as an engineer. This is my y hat. And I could now say, can I use y hat to predict the gender? Like one thing I could do, right? And then knowing that, I will punish. So I will have a gradient on my first part of the problem to make sure that this is not learning, so that in y hat, there is no information about being male or female. So that's one option. Turn out works OK ish. The other way to do it is a little bit more complicated, but not that much. This is what we do. Actually, so what we thought is that instead of trying to fix the problem at the end, which is here, white hat, we try to have an intermediate representation. So basically, the description of my candidate, so the person who is applying for the job, which is going to be neutral. So this is Z. So we have an encoder H, which will transform my candidate, will transform into a neutral candidate. So I will hide really what is something related to gender, but I will try to keep as much information as I can for the task at the end, which is y. Okay, and how I take it away? I use the sensitive variable, okay? So sensitive variable s, and this sensitive variable, I try to compare s with z. So I try to see all, so this is HGR estimation. So I try to see a function, any function f, any function g, which are neural nets, which try to make the correlation. Okay, so I try to find is there any correlation between S and Z? And then, as you see, I mean, it's a, a little bit quick, but you can see that then we, with the lambda in the gradient, we are trying to extract, we take away the error when these two things are close. So what we try to do is we take S, we try to make as decorrelated S from Z, and then this should work. OK, so the question is, does it work? OK, so uh, in order to do this, this is a little example. We, we have tried several things, but I think this is a very nice one. So this little example is the following. You have numbers, um, a 0 to 9, and they have colors at the same time. OK, so the thing is, uh, the thing is, if you have a smart algorithm, what is going to the smart algorithm do? The algorithm is going to choose the right color. I mean, that's the easiest thing, right? Well, why would you like, make your life complicated when you can choose the color? Okay? So we train on this. And if we have no unbiasing method, it, should be, it will predict something red is 0, and something yellow is number 2. So in order to test this, we just change the colors. We randomize the colors. And that's, that's the result. So train test, as you see, very biased, and then we test. And then uh, this is what you obtain. It's 0 40, 47 uh, in terms of accuracy. And for those who are data scientists and are following very in detail what I'm doing, it's more than it should be there, right? Because if I'm totally random and I have, uh, say, nine, uh, 10, 10 numbers, it should be 1 over 10. And so this means uh, what is. What is happening here is that we add a little bit noise to make it a little bit more realistic. Okay? The point is that this a normal algorithm will have a very, very bad accuracy because we learn that the color is very discriminative. Okay? And then if we try our algorithm, um, our architecture, well, actually it does work pretty well and actually works better than other things, which are, the, for example, the one that I explained at the very beginning, which is, okay, let's try to extract the information from Y hat. OK, so this is great. 
So it works. So we say, OK, well, it solved the problem, right? Well, actually, what I didn't tell you is what is fairness? Actually, um, it was implicit in the formula, but I said it's independent. But this is what we really want. I mean, it's not clear that this is what we want, because do we want, for example, to have the best engineer ever, independently, of course, of gender, or do we want to have a protected class and we want to favorize diversity? And as you see, these two things are completely incompatible. Happens the same thing in insurance. Do we want to price the risk very precisely for what your risk is? Or do we want to mutualize the risk with other people who have some, uh, who belong to a protected class or vulnerable class? So this is a really complicated question. And as I said, they are not uh, compatible. So what we did to solve this problem, we work on trying to answer that question. And so we have a, we have a, uh, on a GitHub, we have uh, something we call Fairness Compass, which allows you to answer these questions and in some way log how you arrive to the decision for your fairness. And believe me, one thing is that at the end of the day, these two things are compatible. You have to believe me and trust me that you can rewrite then the formulas for you know, predictive equality or for calibration. You can write them back in what I presented just before. So you would say, guys, that's great. I mean, solve. We have an algorithm can make our world fair. We know what metric. We know how to explain it. That's perfect. Actually, I claim that this is a little bit even more fundamental than that. And why this is so fundamental? When we saw the formulas, and I spent some time on it, I used the sensitive variable. And I said even in the presentation that actually we reconstruct the sensitive variable. So in order to master this sensitivity and this fairness, whatever, you, whatever metric you choose, you need to have access to that. Do we want to give access to sensitive variables to anyone and then trust them? It's a very complicated question, but it's extremely fundamental. I, I put here a typical culture of justice. We believe fundamentally that justice is blind. What I claim is that justice should have the eyes and looking on the different categories that we have so that we can be and provide decisions in a fair way. So the question of is AI going to make our world more fair or not? I think I would like to say, yes, AI can help us design a better future, but I think we will need to trust us humans. Thank you. <laughs>